Hey everybody, it's Izzy here again. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this interesting animated image wall in Motion 5. Somebody had emailed me a sample video clip that they picked up off television or something. They had seen an effect similar to this and wanted to know, was it possible to create it in Final Cut Pro 10? The answer is that while it might be possible, though very difficult, it's actually a lot easier and makes more sense to create this effect in Motion 5. It has tools designed to create this type of effect. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so we begin as always in the project browser. I'll choose motion project here. I'll change my preset to broadcast HD 720. I'm going to change my frame rate to 29.97 and I'm going to choose a duration of six seconds for this project. I'll click open. First thing I like to do as always is save my projects. I'll choose file, save, and I have an image wall too. I'm just going to save over that one. I'll replace it and I'm going to change my zoom level to fit. That way I can see my whole canvas. Now from here, I wanna show you the media that we're gonna be working with just for this demonstration. Now in reality, you're probably gonna have a lot more different images uh, than what I'm using here. I'm only using a, a six different images. It looks like an image sequence here. And if I click this button, you can see that it's actually just a whole bunch of images. I have face 001, face 002. And you can see here in the preview area that I've got the images of my family members there. So it starts with Aiden, a couple images of Aiden, Blake, myself, Noel, and Trinity. And because the way they're numbered, when I I click this button, it appears to be an image sequence, which is a great technique to use when you're doing this type of workflow. It makes it very easy, and you'll see here why in a moment. So I need to add this to my project. I'm just going to select it, and I'm going to choose Import, and now you can see it's in my project. But I'm not going to actually work with the image sequence by itself. I'm going to turn it into something called a replicator. And the way you do that is you just make sure it's selected here in the Layers list, and I'm going to click this little Replicate button here. It's going to create a replicator, and now you can see it gets repeated. And a replicator is a way of creating a pattern. And you can animate it and do all kinds of fun stuff with it. But it's the easy, simple way to create a pattern in Motion 5. Now, we need to make some adjustments to this. The way it is right now isn't going to work. We need to customize it. So I'll go back to the inspector. Now, right now, the shape is rectangle. That's fine. The arrangement is tile fill. That's going to create a tiled fill effect inside the rectangle, that's fine too, but the size is wrong. Right now I need the size to be roughly the size of the canvas. So the width of the canvas right now is 1280 pixels for high definition, although low res high def. And the height is 720, so I'll change it to that and hit return. Now you can see that the outline of the rectangle fills that perfectly. Now I need to decide how many columns I want. Right now I have five columns. You can see all five of them here. I want 12 columns for this project. So I'll just select it and hit 12 and hit return. And in terms of rows, I'm going to have six different rows. And the next thing I'm going to do is go down to my cell controls here, and I'm going to scale down the cells. Now, there's two parts to a replicator. There's the replicator, which is the object that is sort of the pattern creator itself. And then you have the individual cells that make up that pattern. And so each one of these images that you see here is a, a different cell. And you can adjust some of the cell attributes, for example, the scale. Right now the images are too big. I wanna scale them down, so I'm just gonna click and drag till I can see a black border between them. So maybe something like this. That way I've got a black border between them horizontally. And if I go back and adjust the height of this, I'm gonna just adjust the height a little bit to bring them a little bit closer together. There's still gonna be a black line between them, but maybe like that, there we go. So I had to adjust it slightly in order to make it appear better there on the screen. Now, if I play through this, I want you to see the chaos that happens. So I'm gonna hit play. You can see it's cycling through each of the images over and over and over again. That's not what I want, clearly. So what I can do is I can turn off the option to play frames. If I scroll down here for the cell, you can see that it says play frames. What it means is it's, it's gonna play through the frames that make up that image sequence. That's not what I want. So I'm gonna uncheck this and now it's not gonna play the frames. It'll just stay frozen on that first frame. If I hit play, you can see nothing's happening there. But I don't want every single cell to be the same frame. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to choose random start frame. It's going to randomly choose from one of those six images for each of the cells. And then it won't play through it. And you can see just by checking that there's a lot more variety now in this screen. And if you don't like the way it comes up here, if there's too much of repeating of the same stuff right next to each other, for example, then you can just cl keep clicking this generate button and it's going to choose a new random seed until you find something that you like. Now for this project, it doesn't really matter. So I'll just kind of click through it a couple times and it doesn't need to be perfect. Now, of course, I'm using only six different frames. If you were actually doing this, you might want to use a lot more frames than that. One thing else I should point out about those frames is that I made each of the images the exact same pixel dimensions. 
that might be something you want to do when you're creating your own image sequences. Okay, so I'm going to leave it right here for now. Now you can see if I play through it, nothing happens. It just sits on each of those frames. So this is kind of the, the second stage in our animation. That's where the whole wall appears. But now we need to animate it onto the screen. And to do this, we're going to select the replicator here in the layers list. I'm going to go to my behaviors pop-up menu. I'm going to go down to the replicator category and choose sequence replicator. What this is, is a way to animate, sequentially animate some sort of a animation throughout the pattern. And I'm going to show you, you have a lot of different options, but we're going to build our own custom animation here using the sequence replicator. I'll go ahead and select that. You can see that here in the inspector, I've automatically switched over to the behaviors pane. I have one behavior right now. It's the sequence replicator. And when you first add it, it can be a little confusing because it doesn't do anything. If you're new to the sequence replicator behavior, it seems like, okay, it's not even really doing anything. That's because you have to animate. You have to choose which of the parameters you're going to animate. So I need to add them. Now, in this case, what I'm going to add, what I'm going to animate is a position animation. So I'm going to choose add and then position. And then from here, I can animate the X or the Y. But what I want to animate is the depth. I want to have things come from what appears to be sort of behind the camera and then fall into place. So I need to animate the Z. Z is depth, right? So I need to change the Z. Now watch what happens if I click and drag and change the Z. You can see there that absolutely nothing happens. I'm going to hit Command Z to undo. Before anything starts to happen, I need to make a couple of adjustments. And the first one is I need to change sequencing style to from. And what that means is that it's going to start from whatever parameter I set here, whatever that value is. That's where it's going to start from, and then it's going to move to whatever the replicator's position is already. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, so now the next thing I need to do is I need to change my replicator to be a 3D replicator because I'm dealing with Z space depth. I need it to be 3D, so I'll go ahead and check that to turn it on. And it appears that nothing's happened so far, but now when I go back over to behaviors and then I make adjustments to my Z position here, watch what happens. You can see that I can make it go further away from the camera or get closer to the camera. And what I'm gonna do is have it start from pretty high maybe like this, and then I'll hit play here. You can see that they're falling into place, okay? And also I'm gonna change the spread. I'm just gonna tick it up a few so that way that the animation is spread out over several different things at the same time. So in other words, it'll start the animation for the next layer while the first one is still in place. The higher the spread, the more pieces are being animated at the same time. Let's see if I bring it up to 32, you can see that it's happening to pretty much everything at the same time. I'm gonna bring it back down to four or five, I'll just set it for, uh, let's say, six. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So it's falling into place there nicely. The other thing is the traversal is set to constant speed right now. I want to set ease in and ease out. That way it eases into the animation and then it eases out of the animation so it sort of gently falls into place there at the end. That's looking pretty nice. I will also add another parameter that I'm going to animate. So I'm going to choose Add Opacity. And while this is still playing, I'm gonna change the opacity to zero. And what that means is it's gonna to start totally transparent and then it'll appear as it's falling and that'll add to this sort of appearing. There you go. Yeah, that's looking pretty nice. So I've, I'm animating both the opacity and the Z position. Now I could, of course, if I wanted to, spend some time fine tuning this, but there's one more additional thing that I wanna change and that's on the replicator itself. So while that's playing, I'll go ahead and select the replicator inspector pane here. And I'm going to scroll down to where I see shuffle order. And what that's going to do, if I turn that on, you can see right now it's starting from the center and then everything is falling in around it. Well, if I click shuffle order, then what happens is it starts from other places other than the center. And then it's shuffling the order that everything falls into place. And if I don't like the way it's ordering right now, I can just click the replicate C generate button there. And I can just click it a few times to get it to where I want it. And let's see how this is looking here. Okay, that seems fine to me. I'll go ahead and hit pause, move the playhead back to the very beginning, hit play, just to see how it falls into place to make sure everything's good. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now I wanna adjust the duration that it takes for this animation to happen. So what I wanna do is set the playhead to be about three or so Make sure I have the sequence replicator behavior selected. I want that behavior selected because I'm going to hit O on the keyboard, and that sets an out point. So now the animation is only going to happen during the first three seconds, and then it'll just sit in place. So let's see what happens. Of course, it's a much faster animation now. 
Okay. Yeah. In fact, because the animation's so fast now, I'm wondering if maybe we should adjust the uh, the spread so it's not quite as high. Let's see what it looks like here. I'll hit play and adjust the spread down to, uh, let's say, three. Let's see how it looks. Move back to the beginning and hit play. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And of course, the slower the animation, the longer it takes, then the slower everything happens. So if I don't like the way it looks at three seconds, then I could make it take four seconds or so on. But that's how you create the animation to get it into the pattern. Now, the next question is, once it's here, how do we have everything disappear? Well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add the sequence replicator a second time. So I'll use the behavior button here and replicator and then sequence replicator. It's selected right now, so I'm going to hit I on the keyboard to create an endpoint because I want it to happen. Actually, I'm going to back up the playhead here just a little bit to the four-second mark and hit I again. That's going to be the new endpoint. That way, the wall can sit there for about a second before it animates out. Now, the question is, what do I want to animate this time? As it's exiting the screen, what do I want to change? Well, in this case, I'm going to change the rotation. So I'll choose rotation here. And what am I going to rotate? Well, I'm going to click the disclosure triangle and I'm going to rotate on the Y axis. I'll just click and drag. If I hit play here, you can see that it's, I'll just pause the play head there. You can see that it's rotating there a little bit. Right now it's set for 83. I'm going to change it to 90. You can see what it looks like as it's rotating out. So there you go. But you notice that they just stay there, right? So I, what I want to do is have it not just be a rotation. I also want to have the opacity get animated. So I'll add that as a parameter also on this behavior. And I'm going to animate it so it goes down to zero, so it's going to disappear. And you'll notice that, by the way, for this sequence replicator, the second one here, I have it set sequencing to two. What that means is it's going to go from whatever it is already to whatever I set here. So if it's at 100% opacity and I have it set to two, then it's going to go to 0%, in other words, disappear. 0% opacity is totally see-through. I also adjust the spread here a little bit. Let's just set, have it set for maybe five. And now let's play through the end part here to see what it looks like. Okay, that's looking really cool, right? But there's one major problem, and that is it's not starting in the middle and working its way out. That's what I want it to do for this part. I want it to start in the middle and work its way out. It's not doing that. Why is it not doing that? It's because our replicator is not set up that way. If I go back to the replicator inspector and scroll down, you can see that I have the shuffle order here turned on. It's checked. So it's shuffling the order. And so I can't really start at the center exactly every time predictably when I have shuffle order. So I have to decide. Now, I like shuffle order for when the, it's appearing from the replicator. When the replicator is originally appearing, I like that it's shuffled. The 3D effect as the pieces fall into place. But I don't like it as the tiles are exiting. So what can I do? Well, one quick and dirty workaround is simply to duplicate the replicator that we're working on and make the adjustments to the second one, the duplicate. It'll still be the same. So let's take a look at that. What I'm going to do is select my replicator here. I'm going to hit Command D on the keyboard to duplicate it. Now you can see I have it here a second time. Now with the replicator selected, I am going to move the playhead approximately to the, let's say somewhere between three and four seconds. So I'll just set it for here and I'll choose I on the keyboard. I'm going to set an endpoint there. I'm going to get rid of the first animation. I don't need it to appear on the second replicator here. That's already in place. I also need to get rid of the second animation on the first replicator. Don't need it there, so I'll delete it. And I also need to adjust the out point of this replicator so that it overlaps. So I'll hit O on the keyboard there. Uh, actually, I'll back up a little bit and hit O on the keyboard. Let's see. Okay. So yeah, it's a nice transition as I go from one replicator to the other one. Now let's select our second one again, and let's make the adjustment so that it's no longer shuffle order. Let's see how it looks here. And there you go. You can see it's coming from the middle and working its way out. So as it appears on the screen, the order is shuffled. But as it disappears, it's going to sit there for a moment. And then as it disappears, it starts in the middle and works its way out. And of course, we're cheating here. We're using two different replicators. But that's what we need to do in this circumstance. And incidentally, if you don't want to see all these on-screen controls, you can just click outside so you have nothing selected. And then you can play through it and see what the final result looks like. It's pretty cool. And it's exactly what we were going for. And you could have text there in the middle if you wanted it. 
So that's how you create this animated video or animated image wall. By the way, when I say video, you could actually use video clips instead. That would take more computing power, but it's definitely possible. Hopefully you found the information in this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one.